So hi, everyone. Uh, uh, she work on Google servers. And I'm going to talk about the uh, priority version. But sounds like you need a priority for priority version to happen. Uh, so if uh, I'm running CFS or EVDF, uh, I don't have priority. So I should be OK. Uh, so why am, uh, am I run in the wrong conference? Well, I actually didn't not notice there's a separate uh, real-time macro conference. But more importantly, uh, things have changed. First of all, we often want to throttle certain CFS tasks to make room for other tasks. Uh, OK, so yeah, probably better. Uh, So uh, we often want to throttle certain task, CFS tasks to make room for other tasks. This creates a situation what I call a quasi-priority, and we can get into priority inversion. A priority inversion, uh, this means priority inversion can be everywhere, no longer limited to real-time systems. Uh, We do have a kind of official throttling mechanism called CFS bandwidth control, but there's uh, other ways to, uh, or hacks to create, uh, to throttle very deeply and create this quasi priority. Uh, there's uh, two interesting ones, uh, two or two important ones. One is the uh, very small CFS shares, uh, which is uh, the most recent motivation for proxy execution. The other is uh, using very small CPU masks, uh, which we used before, and uh, is the uh, uh, motivation for this work. The uh, priority inversion without priority problem is similar to cl classical uh, priority inversion at its core. Normal tasks are considered a high priority, and the throttle tasks are considered low priority. So if a throttle task is holding a shared mutex, it may hold the mutex for a while due to slow progress, and the normal task uh, would have to wait. In the end, we can get into priority as long as we have strong resources. A scheduler differentiation, that uh, can be anything. Uh, it can be make priority uh, version more generic than dialogues uh, happening from source to uh, funks. So we usually don't get the complete lockups uh, from this kind of problems, but it can be amplified by the uh, number of cores and number of threads. So our larger machine, uh, it can make things go really, really slow. Uh, we Such a problem caused a lot of damage uh, to our production servers. Uh, we have large servers running multiple, uh, many jobs, many threads. Uh, so the, we want to throttle the best effort task to make room for uh, latency sensitive tasks. And we can throttle really low by putting a, a, the most common reason is the memory bandwidth. So the old method we use is putting a lots of threads on like maybe two CPUs. Uh, that delay, uh, it's uh, actually well, surprisingly can be really, really long. It has minutes to uh, like 15 minutes or more of delay. And, uh, Okay. This is not a really... Okay, I'm going to jump in now. <laughs> this is what microconferences are about, uh, about jumping in discussion. So sure. um, I want to know how deep you're going to go into the prior, I know, priority inversion. So your uh, question is, are you using normal prior inheritance for CFS? I'm going to jump right for the... No, no, I'm at, like asking, did you try prior inheritance for CFS? Or are you using something else? I'm using something else. Proxy execution? Uh, no. Okay, because um, okay, so prior like so prior inheritance. I don't know what exactly. Oh, maybe I should listen to what you had to say. But I know prior inheritance itself is not great for CFS because same way it's not great for uh, deadline scheduler. But proxy execution is something. Uh, that's something we're also working on. That yeah, does apply to it. Yeah, one reason is the proxy execution doesn't support our diverse sim. Doesn't support what? Read about read about the semaphore. Oh, that's one uh, major problem. Okay. Yeah, plus there may be, if you have too many threads and too many CPUs, it might have scalability problems. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have we have a comparison if we have time. Okay. Uh, uh, 
problem with reader writers, I'm a fool. Yeah, uh, I think uh, last uh, LPC, they said they, uh, they have given up on supporting reader semaphore. The reason is that if you have party inversion, you need to trace the relationship between the local owners and the local waiters. So it's, it has one to many uh, relation. Uh, we agreed a decade and more ago that we do not do man to one to many. So the, the only problem with reader, with reader writer semaphores is um, that we try to be, so the, the, the reader writer semaphores in, in, in a non real time kernel or uh, trying to be inherently fair. While um, on RT, we gave up on that because uh, it doesn't work. You can't do in priority inheritance on multiple, uh, on multiple readers. If the, if the writer can't make progress because a lot of readers are, are, are stuck there, then there's no way. Right. So, so, you, so you make it writer unfair, which is not ideal, but it, it actually solves the problem. The problem just goes away. Yeah, I think writer latency is actually a more problem for our case. Uh, yeah, the, the, but to be honest, I think it, you're talking about MemAppSAM or uh, MemAppBlock. block. We uh, should finally go there and fix that problem. We're just, we're just admiring it for two, 20 years now. I mean, MemAppSAM was a problem 20 years ago. And everybody runs around and says, yeah, we need to fix that. We need to fix that. And then we do workarounds to not fix it. This is the wrong thing. Come on, come on. It doesn't scale. It's a global lock, and if you have 500 threads hammering on it, it's, it, it just doesn't work. We know that global locks suck. So we need to fix that problem, finally. Yeah. But yeah, but we spend, no, 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 the problem is, I'm, I'm really grumpy about this, because every other conference, people talk about, here is how we work around the problem with, memor, with, with the memap sam. And instead of those 10 people who fi come up with creative workarounds would finally sit down and fix that shit. <laughs> so, uh, so just, just to add here, MMAP, uh, like a MMAP semaphore, I think that's where uh, in, 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 the, in the meta production, we're actually seeing the, the global semaphore issues for in the other uh, part of the kernel as well, like ButterFS and there. So it's, uh, I, I'm kind of looking. I agree that the global locks do not scale. It's very simple that way. And people went a long way all over the kernel place to fix that and get rid of global locks. We have a lot of mechanisms to actually avoid global locks. And we, it's not fixable, period. A global lock doesn't scale. End of story. I mean, we, we had the same issue a, couple of, uh, a year ago when people were complaining about atomic ink not zero. Uh, uh, scalability. It doesn't scale. It's a hardware inherent problem which doesn't scale. The scalability of atomic ink not zero is O n squared. And you can't do anything about this because this is how the hardware behaves. And the same problem ha we have with global locks. If there's a global lock, it sucks. And you can't do what you want, it won't suck less. You can't ignore it and it admire the problem forever, yes. But I mean, a lot of the global locks have been replaced. We, we, a lot of the reader-writer stuff is gone because people went to, uh, to RCU-based mechanisms. And we have, we, we can't ignore these problems and say, hey, I have the next cre creative workaround, which scales maybe up to 500 CPUs, but it pulls apart a thousand. That's what we are doing for 20 years now. So we have to work on it okay. and not admire it. Uh, it's not just the... Uh...
So not all reader writers, semaphores are not global. And come on, let 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 the uh, presenter, you know, speaker, say what what he, he was has to say, right? I'll view say I'll let you jump in, don't I? <laughs> just, just to add on, it's not just global logs. Um, even on Prem30, you have read-write logs where you can do priority inheritance, and we're having problems with uh, CFS throttling because it just breaks LT. So, oh. by the way, this is actually being one of the most successful uh, microconference topics right now. So you're okay. not doing anything very controversial. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's what it's about. Go on, go on, go on. Yeah, very healthy. Uh, so it's, uh, we can compare the real time, uh, uh, the textbook uh, priority inversion, which is uh, like a quasi priority inversion. And uh, uh, this has, there's both similarities and differences. Uh, there's uh, like a, just a sample chat, a chart of uh, log dependencies. Uh, if you're complaining MMMAP Cinema 4, there's uh, that's two more we can complain about. Uh, there's a C group mutex, and there's a C group thread group uh, uh, RWC. Okay, and so actually, I want to say, I think most of us understand this already. So yeah. you really don't yeah. have to describe this. Maybe we want to jump right to your solution. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, so a solution is uh, uh, simple in, uh, in principle. The idea is very simple. So uh, we just don't throttle in the kernel mode. So, uh, uh, so if we... Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the, uh, the problem with we have the most difficult, uh, important problem is uh, one workload affects the other workload. If they have a party inversion with itself, uh, because we are just uh, using containers to running multiple jobs, we don't care that much. So the, uh, the, the coupling is through uh, kernel uh, global logs. So that breaks the isolation between the workloads. So uh, they cannot hold a kernel lock in the in the space. So as long as we make sure we make some progress in the kernel mode, then uh, we don't have this. Uh, it's not too bad, usually. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, so we have implemented this and uh, rolled out to our fleet. So it's, uh, this problem is uh, uh, simple in, uh, in concept, but uh, tricky in the uh, implementation. Two sample problems are that uh, uh, we took some, uh, sorry. Like if we, uh, uh, one of the problems is that uh, if we, C group is by recursive. So uh, if we want to uh, uh, unstrattle thread, we actually have to unstrattle the uh, C group as well. We go to the C group hierarchy and do the unstrattle and the restrattle. So it's uh, uh, that we talk about our solution, but it's interesting to note there's not only one, but actually two uh, similar solutions. Uh, that makes me feel like I'm talking about some uh, great scientific discovery, because things often happen this way. Uh, that one was uh, from uh, Vincent and uh, and Peter. Uh, it's uh, actually it's about for different purpose. Uh, we can run into a uh, sorry uh, for a long time and uh, sorry and uh, Peter and. Uh, we can run into a dialog scenario because the uh, CFS bandwidth control quota replenishment can get the party in worse than the uh, starve. But the, uh, uh, the, uh, if you implement this, uh, the two implementations actually have a very similar effect. Uh, we, did, we are working together, but uh, we still end up uh, having two different approaches. But the uh, effect is very similar. Uh, the purpose, the motivation was different. The implementation uh, is different. But the effects uh, uh, have to be very similar. Uh, we can potentially to s switch to the other approach, but the major concern is the uh, threat count scalability. Uh, uh, like a, I mean, I, I can, yeah. Um, right now, um, for throttling CFS group, uh, for CFS run queues, you know, you have the whole hierarchical sh shebang where when one C group runs out of runtime, you just remove that CFS frame queue from the hierarchy. 
um, the approach I went for, uh, at some point when you unshort all of that, you reach a point where, oh, finally that, ha that part of the hierarchy can be unshortled, and so you unshortle all of this. So you bunch up, like if you would have had N CFS rank queues that you unshortle, you bunch that into a single lock, ac lock acquisition and you rank all of the tasks. But uh, actually Ben commented about that, and I think there's way to break this up, so I don't think it's like a major problem for this. There's ways around it. So this is a, like a, a more detailed in-depth comparison. Uh, help, I guess, things correct. Uh, so this is uh, there's too many details, uh, mostly for offline reading. Uh, at a high level, uh, our method adds some, uh, uh, added some annoying edge trigger task group in queues and dequeues, but uh, it's preserved uh, the ability to discard its whole C group. So it's not uh, very sensitive to the number of threads. Uh, the other one don't have a formal name, so I just code a uh, comment called when the throttling happens. Uh, has an overall cleaner code, uh, but it pushes the, the bulk of NQDQ from a uh, per task group uh, to per task. So it can uh, have many uh, per task operations. Here are the results uh, we got from the rolling out uh, this uh, solution, uh, don't throttle in kernel mode. Uh, to our fleet. We saw a 2x to 4x reduction of C group mutex max wait time. Uh, the benefit of that might actually be larger uh, for uh, applications than the, than the metric suggests. We do notice multiple timeout problems disappeared. I suspect it might be a bigger difference in the tail case. Maybe a stuckness can lead to downwards spirals and a small fraction of uh, machines can be uh, badly stuck for a while. The matrix was collected by profile contention feature edited by Nam Yang Kim. There's a link, you can, if you want to use it, you can, you can follow that link. Uh, this delaying, uh, it's important to note that delaying the breaking down of machines at higher utilization is a capacity gain. We can run existing machines hotter instead of uh, adding more machines. The so gain can be quite a substantial because uh, it affects all machines and uh, it's a fraction of the whole fleet. So I have talked about uh, specific problems and solutions. Let's zoom out and uh, uh, put a few related things in a table. So we have three things nicely fit in the three quadrants based on whether they are generic or specific. So the classical priority inheritance, uh, you need to trace the logs and uh, it's uh, for a specific SCAD mechanism like SCAD 5.4. Uh, so it's specific to both. Proxy execution, uh, I think it uh, doesn't really care about scheduling a mechanism because it's uh, just uh, use the, uh, uh, do the run the whole thing. Uh, but it uh, does do need to uh, trace the logs. So it's specific logging mechanism not specific to scheduling mechanism. This uh, our like priority inheritance or when the throttling happens, uh, it's only for CFS bandwidth control, but uh, it doesn't need to tr trace locks because the whole kernel mode is protected. So can we uh, have a, can we fill the force box with something? Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm not sure if this problem is very similar to, like I get like you speak with user space folks and they always want priority inheritance for p-thread condition. Can we say these two problems are similar? Which so two like, problems? Like they, they want like condition, condition variables. Like so if they have a condition variables, you don't block. But they want priority inheritance based on condition variables. And I'm not sure if I understood the problem correctly, but here you want, Priority inheritance once we move away from user space and enter the kernel, which is your condition over here for triggering priority inheritance. Yeah, I want to avoid uh, being sp be specific to uh, a, a locking primitive. So because there's a, one, there's multiple ways, uh, multiple uh, locks. The other one is some dependency actually don't have explicit locks. You can always check some condition and the call yeah. schedule. Then uh, uh, we do have actually uh, we do have a nick actually kind of rolls their own mutex 
and we do see that in the, in the real world. So okay. uh, we, I want to protect the whole uh, kernel mode. Okay, I'm not exactly sure, but like one of the sol potential solutions for that condition variables that has been discussed. So RCU has something called RCU boost mechanism, where it kind of holds a fake lock to force the, basically another task to, to do the inheritance. This is being looked at as a potential way to do it, but like we rely on a Briggs execution to do the rest of the work because you just basically have to hold a lock. Uh, I don't know if this can be potentially kind of a generic way to, to basically force inheritance for these conditions or scenarios where you don't actually hold a real lock, but you kind of force holding a fake lock to do that. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, so proxy execution helps here, but only if you can actually inherit something. So with root locks, you're screwed and you hit the problem that was described earlier. So we do need something extra. With read write locks, uh, because you can sanely do any priority inheritance with them. So if you hold something and you get throttled, then yeah, you're screwed. You mentioned uh, CPU set earlier. Is this working with CPU set? Uh, no, we ask uh, the, the uh, Oreo space people switch uh, from CPU set to a CFS bandwidth control because CPU set you cannot really tune it. It's kind of a mandate. Um, I just want to call out another benefit of proxy execution, right? It, this solves in terms of, say, bandwidth throttling, but proxy execution will also solve things like if you have a thread that's running on a big CPU, waiting on a thread that's running on a little CPU, I don't think this is going to help there, right? Will it? Uh, it should still help. Uh, you would, you would want a, a thread to run faster and quicker on a big CPU, maybe, in that instance. It's, yeah, it's not very precise, so it uh, pre might prevent the worst cases, but it's not uh, like a high-performance kind of mechanism.